Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. My name is Jim Tierney and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about 3D Invigorator and the materials that are used within it. So let's dive into it. As you can see we have the material swatches down here. Now these act as your presets. We've got a wide variety of materials to choose from. You've got close to 100 by default. Uh, a lot of them are kind of shiny gold or metallic looking textures. Some of them are transparent. And you also have a lot of soft, kind of matte, billiard ball looking materials as well. So lots of different things to choose from. And of course you can take these and combine them into object styles. But that's a whole separate tutorial. But the key thing about the materials is that they're all editable. You can go up to the material editor and make changes to them. You can add texture maps. You can do all sorts of things to customize them to get exactly what you want out of that. So let's take a look at the material editor. That's kind of the important bit here. Uh, the first thing is the text field where you can name your texture or material. If I want to save the material out to the material swatches for later use, so for example, if I really like this material and I think it's going to be something I want to use again, I can save the material to bin and that will save it down to the material swatches palette. And so we can always refer back to it later on when we're setting up other objects. The color up here basically sets the base color of the object. And that's always going to be true unless you have a texture map applied to it. And we'll talk about texture maps in just a second. Highlight and sharpness. The highlight sharpness and highlight brightness refer to the specular highlight of the object. So in this case we have kind of a matte material on there if I render this out. You can see it looks very soft. It's a little bit shiny, but for the most part, it looks like it's kind of covered with felt or something like that. Now this really kicks in when you turn on reflectivity. So if I come down to my reflectivity slider and I turn on reflectivity, because reflectivity always has to have a texture map. And we can click on the bin here and that brings up my file selector. And this allows me to select different image files to use as a reflection map. Now the thing about reflections is that they always require some sort of texture map. There always has to be some sort of environment that's reflecting onto the object to kind of sell that effect of reflectivity. Because really what, what's happening with reflections is they're just reflecting the environment that the object's in. If the object's not in an environment, say it's just in space in a black vacuum, it's not really going to reflect anything. There's nothing there for it to reflect, except perhaps you know blackness. And so what the texture map in the reflectivity bin does for us is gives the object something to reflect. And so when I go back up to my highlight sharpness and highlight brightness, you know, this starts to control how the light looks to the object. So if my highlight sharpness is really cranked up, if I've got, you know, close to 100, and I've got my brightness up as well, you can see in my little preview here, I've got a very sharp pinpoint light. Now if I set the sharpness down to a lower value, what's going to happen is the effect is the light is going to get larger or brighter. You can watch the preview there and see what happens. And it's almost like I'm moving the light much closer or just making it much larger. And if I render this out, you'll see that looks a lot different than if I have my sharpness down to kind of a pinpoint light like that. So the highlight and reflectivity make a huge difference when they're working together. So that's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, bumpiness requires again a texture map. And we have a whole separate tutorial on texture mapping so I'm not going to go into that right now. Transparency, as you might suspect, allows you to make the object semi-transparent. So if we crank this up a little bit and I re-render this, you'll see that now I can see the back sides of the object through the object. And let me increase this even further and render that out. And so the object becomes very much see-through, like it's made of thin glass or 
some other transparent material. It's very useful if you have something interesting in the background. In this case, we just have kind of a white background back there. So that's not really helping us out too much. So I'm going to turn the transparency all the way down. And the last part of the material editor that we need to talk about is the color section. Now the standard color is just kind of your standard material setting. It's going to take on the color from your color swatch or from the texture map. If I turn on my texture map, the color is ignored and the inherent texture of the object is taken from this map. So let's turn off reflectivity for the time being. And you can see that I've got this kind of rainbow noise texture going on. And the hard is now taking that texture on. Now I can come down here and start adding in reflectivity and start creating all sorts of other interesting effects. Let's turn the brightness down a little bit and render that out. And it's a really nice way of kind of combining different textures and getting really interesting effects that you can apply to your 3D objects. However, in this case, since we have kind of this heart here, I, I'm kind of liking the red color to it. So we're going to turn off the texture map. Again, if we want to change that texture map, we can just click on the bin right here, and that'll bring up the file selector. And we can select pretty much anything that we want. But like I said, I kind of like the red color, so we're just going to leave that as is. Now you can also select absolute color. So what this is going to do is pretty much ignore all of these other things here. The reflectivity, the bumpiness, pretty much everything except for the color. And the entire object is just going to be this one flat color. And this can be interesting if you're trying to create like a silhouette type of look. But for most uses, it's not really that useful. And we can also select cartoon color. And this is a little bit more interesting if we turn off reflectivity. And what's going to happen is it's going to try and create kind of a cell shaded look. And so if I render this out, you can see what's happening here. It doesn't really work all that well on this particular object, but as you can see with the preview up here on the sphere, it kind of creates a cell shaded kind of comic book type of look that doesn't have a lot of realism, but if you're going for that drawn or painterly type of look, it's a kind of a great effect. Uh, the wireframe as you might suspect, creates a wireframe. So if you're going for kind of a high-tech heart, this will give it to you. Let's render this out and see what we get. So this can create some really nice effects when combined with other materials. So for example, an object style that I set up a while back makes use of multiple textures, including the wireframe along the edges. So you can see my wireframe is right here and I have solids on the front and the back and along the middle of this, the bevels along the middle of the side. But we've got a little bit of wireframe going on here just to add in a little kind of interesting detail to it. And so I, th I think the wireframes work much better when used in conjunction with something else. And then the last three are kind of more advanced ones which we're not going to touch on in this tutorial. So really that's about it for the material sections. The important thing to know is that the material swatches are your preset manager. And you can save your own presets down here by selecting on save material to bin. And otherwise you just need to set up your color, set up any texture maps that you want to use, especially reflectivity maps, and you're good to go. So thanks for joining me. Hope you found this informative. And go to digitalanarchy.com for a lot of other tutorials, both on 3D Invigorator and our other products. And thanks for joining me.